Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt Ellis over here at Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. You know guys, last week I did a video on the deadlift, just giving some tips and tricks and things that people might need to know as they transition from a hex bar into a straight bar, or if someone's never lifted before, just some general tips to help them uh, lift more weight and stay safer when using a straight bar for a deadlift or pulling off the ground for a clean or for a snatch. Well, one of the questions that I've gotten a lot throughout the years has to deal with the box squat. Now, here at Primal, we absolutely love box squatting for our athletes for a few different reasons that we're going to get into. But the number one thing that I hear about box squat is people email me all the time and they say, you know, people box squatting, they're going to, you know, herniate their discs in their back and, you know, their vertebrae is going to pop out of their spine and, uh, you know, hit the wall behind them. And, you know, we're putting the, uh, our athletes at, at risk, at danger for potential catastrophic career ending injuries because we have them actually touch their butt to a box when they sit down. And I think the box squat's one of those exercises where it looks dangerous, it looks difficult, it looks like something that could seriously hurt you. But what I'm gonna do today is try to teach you some of the myths and some of the corrections, the way to properly do a box squat so that you guys can avoid injury, but also see the benefits of box squatting in teaching your athletes, number one, how to properly squat, and number two, how to activate their hips and how to activate their glutes, which is going to translate better into the field of play or into the throwing circle. So the first thing that we need to do, guys, is we need to talk about the box squat and see why it's such a beneficial thing. What I want you guys to do at home, if you're watching this, is to find a chair that when you sit down in the chair, your knees are going to be parallel. Basically, your body's going to be parallel to the ground. What we mean by that is that the hip joint and the knee is going to be in a straight line. This box is a little bit below parallel for me, and that's where I like to work. Now, when you first start out, and this is how we teach our athletes how to squat, believe it or not, well, we do a basic body weight squat during our warm up, and then a brand new athlete that's never squatted before, they're gonna be right here on the box. And this is why. What we'll have them do is we'll actually have them lean back a little bit and take their fingers and dig their fingers into the front of their hips, right below their waistband, and kind of find their hip flexors. Now, by moving their legs around a little bit, they can feel their hip flexors. They're like little fingers here in the front of the hips, moving and firing and pulsating around as they move. So as they kind of wiggle their butt, wiggle their knees, you can feel your hip flexors kind of turning on and shutting off. You can feel them moving a little bit. And that's a great thing to do because the athlete starts to realize their hips. Once they start to feel their hips, I have them rock back and forth. We've got their shoulders back, and my goal is to try to get them to touch their sternum to the opposite wall of the gym. So we're not going to duck our head down. We're going to move our chest forward. We're going to push our chest and push the sternum forward. As we do this, we're going to find that tipping point where it feels like they're about to lean forward and their butt's about to come off the box. We'll have them stand straight up. Now from here, we keep the hands on the hips and we start to push our butt backwards. This is very important because it teaches athletes how to hinge their hips. We've done videos on this before, how to actually push their hip backwards, how to hinge their hips backwards. So we'll have the athletes with a nice wide stance hinge their hips backwards. And at this point, they can actually feel their hips start to activate. They can feel them kind of firing on and off. As you sit down, they'll feel the hips turn on, activate. As they sit down, nice, easy seat. I like to tell athletes to think of themselves sitting on an ice cold toilet seat. You're not gonna plop your butt down. You're not gonna just slam down on the box. You're gonna gently sit back and just ease into the box so that you're just gliding onto that box. And that's where a lot of uh, confusion about box squatting is. They think box squat, you put you know, a few hundred pounds on your back and you just slam your butt down onto this box and your spine is gonna compress and the discs are gonna fly out of your back and hit the wall behind you. That's not the case. We'll have them repeat that motion a few times. And when they get down to the box, what they'll feel is that as they relax their butt and as they relax their hips, 
you can feel the hip flexors turning on and turning off. That's very important. So as they go to stand up, as they go to push that sternum forward and fire off that box, they can feel their hips, boom, popping on. They can feel the hips activate. And that's very important for, for any athletic movement, but throwing especially. As you stand up, boom, your hips will fire and you're squeezing your butt at the top. Now what does that resemble? Any type of throw, as you land in a power position, especially shot and discus, as you land, your hips need to instantly fire. Your hips are going from basically your feet being off the ground, your hips are not active. As soon as your feet hit the ground, you need to turn those feet and fire those hips. Push those hips forward, explode with the hips. So with a box squat, what we're doing essentially is we're turning the hips off, bam, firing them back on. Turning them off, boom, firing back on. And if you do this a few times at home, you'll be able to feel your hip flexors firing on and off. As soon as they turn off, boom, we're going to fire and stand up. Notice we're not plopping down on the box. We're easing into the box, boom, fire, ease in, there's my hips, bang, explode. Ease in, there's my hips, boom, explode. Try it at home, you'll be able to feel it. Now, once an athlete can do a body weight box squat, we'll move into putting some weight in their hands. So we might do a single kettlebell goblet box squat. Try saying that three times fast. Sit down, hips, bang, explode up. Sit down, hips, bang, explode up. Once they can do a single kettlebell, we might move on to increasing the weight of the kettlebell or going on to two dumbbells. Now, two dumbbells is a little bit more difficult. We're going to squeeze the dumbbells together, keep it up in front of them just like a front squat, sit, bang, explode, sit, explode. This just allows you to use some lighter dumbbells to have them get the movement, having more weight in front of their body. From there, we'll move on to double kettlebell, where the kettlebells are in the racked position. After that, we might move on to something like a 45 pound straight bar or a safety bar. The safety bar, empty, is 85 pounds. So you can see, the videos that you might be seeing online are some of our athletes that are box squatting with a safety bar, you know, 350, 400, 450, 500 pounds. We've got a video of one of our guys, I think, hitting 720 on a box squat, uh, totally raw, you know, no belt, no knee wraps, uh, just in regular training sneakers. So what you see is that it's, we're not crazy, okay? We know what we're doing, and we teach our athletes from the ground up with just basic body weight squats. That's how you should start teaching your athletes. I am a big, big, big time supporter of box squatting and feel like it translates perfectly into the field of play or into the throwing circle. So if you're a coach, if you're out there and you want to teach your athletes to squat properly, just incorporate these steps. Get a box, get a stool, a chair, anything, a weight bench that might be right around parallel for your athletes have them start by sitting on it, get them to feel their hips. Feel how the hips can activate, feel how they need to squeeze their glutes as they stand up, and by turning the hips off and turning the hips back on again, they're gonna be more explosive, they're gonna be able to generate more power, more force into the ground, they're gonna be able to jump higher, throw further, run faster. It is the bread and butter, it is the foundation exercise what you should be doing in your weight room. Guys, if there's any questions, make sure you email me, matt at primalatc.com, or you can leave your comments and questions below this video in the YouTube uh, comment section. All right? Any questions, let me know. Hope to hear from you soon.